Tokyo, Tokyo Live, Live Endoscopy One. One. So, um, so hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the, to the session of a, a live demo of the uh, power endoscopic tumor resection or a STAR uh, procedure for esophageal submucosal tumor. So uh, this session, uh, myself, Haru Inoue, and the uh, uh, Professor Joyan Cho, uh, he is a president of a KSGE. So uh, two of us uh, will moderate this session. So um, uh, Dr. Joanne Cho, please introduce the, uh, our first speaker. Hello, I am Joel Jo, the president of KSG. It is a great honor and pleasure to have the opportunity to moderate this section with Professor Inoue in Tokyo Live 2021. I hope this live section inspire you to share experience with other colleagues. Uh, host uh, moderate, uh, operator is Professor Philip Zhu in the Hong Kong. Uh, Philip Zhu is a great endoscopist and surgeon in the world. Uh, Professor Inoue and Philip Chu are my old friends. Uh, this section is a uh, poor oral endoscopy tumor resection for spagia submucosal tumor. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Haruhiro Inoue and uh, Professor Chung Young Cho. And uh, I'm really, really honored uh, to uh, share with you uh, per oral endoscopic tumor resection for Yisof Junior Lao Baumat in this session and congratulations to Professor Inoue for a successful Tokyo Live 2021. So first, uh, let me share uh, my uh, presentation. Okay, so um, this uh, presentation is about a 37 years old gentleman who have a retrosternal hold up sensation for one month and the first OGD was performed in August last year, which showed a esophageal submucosal tumor located at 25 centimeter from the incisor. And uh, on endoscopic ultrasound, it showed that it's a 3.2 times 1.4 centimeter of uh, submucosal tumor arising from muscularis propria. Uh, they actually did an FNA, which showed the benign smooth muscle tissue. Uh, on the CT scan of the forex, it showed a 3.3 times 1.7 times, times 5.2 centimeter fusiform soft tissue tumor without contrast enhancement in the esophagus. Because of the consideration of his symptom at his young age, he accept uh, for uh, endoscopic resection by per oral endoscopic uh, tumor resection or the POET. So um, this is the uh, procedure of uh, the uh, POET and uh, performed for this uh, very large tumor. And you can see that this uh, tumor is located in the esophagus and 25 centimeter from incisor. So I generally will start my mucosal incision at around two centimeter proximal to the tumor. And uh, because uh, with the development of a short tunnel, it's uh, first at the advantage of not missing the tumor, but secondly, also important for us uh, during the retrieval of the tumor, because uh, during the uh, procedure after completion of the dissection, uh, the closer the uh, mucosal entrance to the tumor, the better will be the ergonomic to pull the tumor out uh, through um, per orally. So as uh, usual, um, the, with the similar uh, technique of uh, POEM procedure, POET is similar that uh, we develop a uh, submucosal tunnel uh, all the way to the uh, tumor site in the proximal part. And uh, the uh, usual instrument that I use include uh, the dew knife, uh, and uh, with the water jet function and also uh, the IT nano. So you can see that uh, I'm ensuring my trajectory of the tunnel is uh, correct and uh, locating the tumor here. So now I started the uh, dissection at around um, the tumor site. And uh, you can see um, the uh, tumor is a bit elongated, which is a bit uh, 
common uh, uh, phenomenon, especially for a leomalma in the esophagus. So um, what we need to do is uh, we have to be careful about the dissection around the tumor. And uh, of course, um, to mobilize and uh, to stop any kind of bleeding. Uh, there are sometimes a feeding vessel around the tumor that can actually bleed. So uh, using a coagulation mode, we can stop the bleeding. And uh, this uh, uh, dual knife have the advantage that we can uh, inject more if needed. So, and now you can see uh, that uh, we are dissecting the tumor away uh, from the lateral side. So from my uh, usual practice, I would uh, firstly dissect uh, to reach the proximal side of the tumor border, and then the develop a tunnel on the both sides, uh, lateral to the tumor, and then afterwards uh, develop a, a distal uh, pocket of around two centimeters so that to enhance mobilization of the tumor. And after completion of all this uh, dissection, then I would uh, start uh, mobilizing and dissecting at the base over the muscle side. So uh, within the tunnel, uh, sometimes a bit difficult to manipulate the tumor, especially when the, we are dissecting uh, at the base. So um, the space is limited, so that's uh, for sure. But uh, because of uh, this is a benign nature of uh, this tumor, so I'm not so uh, worried about um, uh, breaching any uh, tumor capsule or knee gap uh, over there. So uh, I combine the use of uh, the dual knife and also the uh, IT nano knife for the uh, dissection. So as you can see, I continue dissecting the tumor uh, away from the uh, base of uh, the muscularis propria layer. And uh, you can see during the dissection, I also try uh, to achieve a good hemostasis with uh, the use of coagulation mode. So uh, the uh, use of this uh, IT nano have the advantage that uh, I can uh, not only dissect, but sometimes also like a blunt dissection, uh, try to lift up the tumor and uh, to identify uh, the border of uh, the tumor uh, away from the uh, muscularis propria layer. So you can see that uh, we are now exposing the tumor and dissecting at the uh, muscularis propria layer after adequate uh, tunnel uh, over the lateral side of uh, the uh, uh, tumor. So uh, now um, starting to uh, continue the uh, dissection at the base uh, with a, a good hemostasis. So um, uh, the mobilization and the recognition of the plane is very important. So um, cutting into the muscle layer, we might actually end up in the, uh, entering into the uh, mediastinum, but uh, with the use of the CO2 uh, insufflation, it will be safe. Uh, of course, uh, sometimes it might also have a high level of anti CO2 during the procedure. So we need to tell the anesthetist uh, that there could be high uh, anti CO2, and also uh, this uh, procedure should be done under general anesthesia. So now uh, mobilizing uh, again uh, at the base of the tumor, I uh, usually dissect uh, from the uh, uh, oral side to the anal side. Uh, but uh, sometimes uh, when we are difficult in the opening or the uh, uh, mobilizing the tumor or even to retrieve the tumor, there are a few tricks that we can do. Uh, one of the tricks is actually to uh, open a distal uh, mucosal uh, exit site. Uh, so that the tumor can be pushed down. And uh, sometimes for big tumor, we have to do that. So uh, this is uh, bigger than the, we estimate uh, uh, in terms of the size. So during the procedure, I already has been thinking about how we can actually uh, take this tumor out. And the other challenge in uh, managing a very big uh, submucosal tumor is that we do not know the end point of um, the dissection because we cannot see the whole border of uh, the tumor. And uh, so at the very end, we do not actually know when we will be able to stop the uh, procedure and uh, completely mobilize and dissect the tumor. So uh, I think uh, sometimes uh, I actually uh, would try um, to um, pull it, even though I'm not too sure if uh, all the attachment of the tumor being completely um, um, dissected out. And uh, I think uh, I 
Also remember in the, one of my uh, live demonstrations uh, during ETW, yeah. I think uh, Professor Inoue uh, developed a, uh, uh, a very nice uh, space adjuster. And for that the space adjuster, I can actually see the plane very well. So uh, from the innovation of Professor Haruhiro Inoue. So you can see now, I'm uh, close to uh, complete dissection, but uh, not yet uh, fully uh, mobilized the tumor. So the uh, procedure is being repeat and repeat. So uh, I think uh, the other um, important point is the distal attachment. As I mentioned before, um, the space adjuster is a really nice uh, uh, distal attachment, uh, but uh, this is not available in Hong Kong. So what I can do is uh, a short transparent hood to allow me to have the space and also try to manipulate the, the, uh, the tumor. So this is uh, almost like uh, the uh, final end of uh, dissection at the base. So the difficulty again is uh, to be sure when we can completely uh, mobilize and dissect. In general, um, the uh, risk of uh, doing this procedure, including um, the damage to the surrounding structure in the medicinum. So sometimes uh, this tumor actually sit very close to the arch of aorta. So for those area, we have to be very careful. I remember in one case, I actually use uh, uh, intraoperative uh, out and EUS to ensure that this tumor was not attached to the uh, arch of aorta. So uh, of course the other is uh, if it's located anteriorly, it may be very close to the trachea and the, the membranous part of trachea is really, really dangerous. So have to be uh, avoid um, damaging the trachea, the membranous part of the trachea. So um, that you can see is uh, progressing. Uh, and um, so now it's just a strip uh, of the muscle layer at the base. So uh, a little bit difficult to see at the base and uh, but uh, I think uh, it, we are really, really close uh, to the base. And uh, you can see there's still a thin layer of um, outer longitudinal layer being intact. So in this case, uh, we strictly speaking, haven't been uh, going to full uh, resection of the muscularis propria layer. So uh, I almost complete, so I try uh, to retrieve the tumor. So one of the challenge, as I mentioned, is that uh, this is a very big tumor. So of uh, five centimeter in the length. So uh, I try to use uh, the uh, snare to pull it out. So you can see that uh, it is a little bit difficult to pull it out because um, of the mucosa. And uh, if you remember the mucosa also as the muscularis mucosa, a lot of time is pulled back and uh, not allowing us to um, uh, pull out the tumor. So then I try to open a little bit more of the uh, mucosa uh, entrance in order to allow the tumor to be able to achieve. So there are several ways to pull out the tumor. One is to use a snare, and you can also use an uh, instrument like a rough net, uh, but uh, opening up the net is uh, quite difficult uh, in this situation with the limited space. And still I try and uh, cannot uh, pull it out. So I open more of the mucosa. Knowing that, that the base of the tumor, uh, I haven't been completely dissecting the muscularis uh, layer. So I am not so worried. So now you can see the tumor can come out, but uh, slowly, slowly with the help of the anesthetist. Okay. And then uh, I examine back uh, the uh, area. So uh, firstly to do hemostasis at the base. So using a coagulation plasma to uh, achieve a good hemostasis. And then I found that the mucosal entrance is a bit too big. And uh, so I have to close it uh, sequentially uh, with the use of the clip. So the clip that I'm using is actually the Olympus uh, uh, EC clip. Uh, no, sorry, the Quick Clip Pro. And uh, in fact, uh, this is a, uh, a, big, a longer clip, but uh, with a bigger jaw so that uh, I can uh, be sure it grabs the two edge uh, more safely. Uh, a total of 20 crypts was being applied uh, to close this defect. So uh, in fact, uh, the challenge point is actually over the top part. After closing up all this mucosa, at the uh, very end at the top part, uh, it becomes folding, uh, the mucosa becomes folding. Uh, so, uh, 
uh, there's still a little bit of a hole you can see at the base, uh, which uh, I need to close. So I try to achieve a, a good closure, but because of the tension and everything, it, it become a little bit more difficult to close um, the, uh, the final defect. So you can see still after uh, multiple creeps to close uh, the uh, proximal end is uh, not uh, really, really good in terms of the appearance. So this is a final part, uh, but uh, on post-op day four, the patient developed fever after taking some fluid. And uh, I can see that uh, on diagnostic endoscopy, uh, there's a gap over the proximal end of the mucosal uh, closure. So uh, no breakdown of the crib, but uh, uh, at the proximal end of the uh, mucosa, uh, there is a, a, a gap. So what I do is I use a clip and the loop uh, technique. So um, this is actually the empty clip uh, and uh, with a smaller end and uh, so that uh, I can uh, help and close this final defect with the uh, loop tightening up all this clip. So, and uh, after uh, closing, uh, it become more secure. So although we look at it and see that there's a lot of free creeps here, but uh, finally the patient can tolerate that well. And uh, he recovered and uh, discharged on day seven after the poet procedure. And the pathology showed is a laomaoma of five times three times 1.7 centimeter without any malignancy. So thank you very much for your kind attention. So thank you very much, Philip. It was a great presentation and a beautiful uh, demonstration. Yeah, really appreciate it. So um, I think it's better to, uh, uh, we will move on to the uh, Onimaru Sensei's mini lecture and then we will discuss it uh, together totally. So uh, uh, I would like to introduce the uh, next speaker. Uh, he is uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Manabu Onimaru. So he is, uh, 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 he's an associate professor of uh, uh, Shoba University Koto Kaisa Hospital. So, uh, Dr. Onimo, please start your lecture. Thank you very much uh, for your kind introduction. So, I'd like to talk about poet and stuff based on our experiences and the uh, review of literatures. Well, uh, let's move on to my presentation. I'd like to make a mini lecture about parola endoscopic tubal resection port and some goza channel endoscopic resection stir, focusing on its concept, outcomes, and limitations. This slide shows the current standard strategies for the resection of SMTs in upper GI. When the SMTs are derived from the muscularis mucosa, there is little risk of perforation and the tumors are often relatively small, so endoscopic treatments such as EMR or ESD are selected. On the other hand, when the SMTs are derived from the muscularis propria, thoracoscopic surgical resection is usually selected because of avoiding the risks of endoscopic perforation and poor endoscopic visualization due to the relatively large tumors. Now, let's make sure what are the indications of resection for SMTs. According to the clinical guidelines, SMTs are surgically removed when symptomatic or potential malignancy is suspected. For example, even a small SMT with 20 mm or less in size will be subjected to resection if it is diagnosed at least. In recent years, as the diagnostic abilities of SMTs have advanced by several modalities, like thin thread CT, EU, SFNA, and so on, there are increasing opportunities for resection of SMTs, such as this, even for with a small tumor size. Along the guidelines, even if the SMTs derived from muscularis propria are small, SMTs are recommended to be rejected. However, under the conventional strategies, the only strategy of resection is thracoscopic surgical resection, and it can sometimes be an over-invasive treatment. Therefore, these invasive methods using endoscopic techniques to reject SMTs have been awaited. In 2007, Sumiyama first reported a novel endoscopic conception in ex vivo samples. This technique is a pure endoscopic technique 
named submucosal endoscopy with mucosal flap safety valve SEMF technique. As you can see in the figures, the CMF technique approaches the deeper space below the mucosal layer with the mucosa overlying the dissected submucosa space served as a safe flap valve. This slide shows the diagram of procedures for power endoscopic myotomy formed for esophageal achalasia. Based on the concept of SEMF technique, form was developed by Inoue and its effectiveness and safety have now been established. This clinical success of POEM provides that third space endoscopy based on the SEMF technique can also be applied clinically as well as in ex vivo samples. In the conventional method, even if the SMT was small, SMTs derived from the muscularis purpurea were rejected by thoracic surgical approach. In the thoracic surgical approach, there are some burdens on patients such as one lung ventilation, thoracotomy, skin and mediastinal plural incision, and the possibility of postoperative adhesions. On the other hand, if the SEMF technique can apply to the SMT resection, the procedure is completed only in the GI lumen. This approach eliminates its concerns and potentially makes it even less invasive. In 2012, a novel endoscopic treatment for SMTs in upper GI using this SEMF technique was reported. For oral endoscopic tumor resection port and some causal tunnel endoscopic resection star. The name report emphasizes the meaning of the technique of pure per oral endoscopic treatment as being derived from POEM procedure. And the name star also emphasizes the meaning of treatment in some concert channel, but these parts and the star are synonymous. This is a procedural brief video of Fort Star. Port stir was performed under general anesthesia with endotracheal intubation using CO2 endoscopic insufflation. Mucosal entry was made at 3 cm proximal to the SMT, and some causal channel was created and advanced towards the SMT. They created the some causal channel, and creation of the SMT was done by dissection of muscle fibers connected to the SMT. After completion of integration, tumor was extracted per orally and the mucosal entry was closed endoscopically finally. This slide shows the summary of recent studies regarding clinical results of poet stir. As shown in this table, complete resection rate and unblocked resection rate were over 90% and the recurrence rate was extremely low. The most popular adverse events were gas-related complications, but by using shoes in separation, there had no severe post-operative cause. There are other complications such as inflammation-related and bleeding, but none of them were severe general adverse events. Like this, Poetoster is highly efficient and safe treatment option for upper GI SMT. Next, what are the limitations of Poetoster? The first limitation coming up is the size of the tumor. In most of the reports, tumor size in minor axis more than 30 or 40 mm was excluded from the indication of Poetoster because of the difficulty in retrieval of the tumor per orally. And almost of the tumors that meet this criteria are bulky and located adherent to important outer organs. As an indicator of tumor volume, we measure the product of the major and minor diameters of the tumor at tumor mass index TMI and the tumors with TMI over 1,000 
reported to be an indicator of a high likelihood of conversion to surgery. The second considering limitation is tumor character. In the oncological view, this should be rejected in unblock. However, in your experience, these are more fragile as compared with other SMTs and rejected with an inject capsule is technically more challenging. On the other hand, this with small size under 20 mm are usually in low risk malignancy. Thus, all patients with this or suspected this should be discussed in multidisciplinary tumor boards and the post should be only be performed by an expert operator. This is a summary of this presentation. White stir is highly effective and safe alternative to surgery for SMTs in upper GI. White stir can be applied to SMTs with exclusive criteria as tumor size in minor axis over 30 to 40 mm, bulky growth tumor adherent to outer important organs, highly malignant potential. White stir can be applied to this. However, it should be limited to this with lower risk classification and be carried out by an expert operator in an experienced center because it demands high techniques. Thank you very much for your attention. Sir, thank you very much, Onimal Sensei, uh, for your uh, nice uh, 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 looking back the background of this procedure and the uh, uh, overview uh, of this procedure. So uh, we, we, we would like to start the uh, discussion. So uh, first, uh, I would like to uh, ask uh, Dr. Philip. Um, so uh, you um, reported that uh, you mentioned the technique of uh, uh, in the large uh, lyomyoma. It's a, so of course the size is less than the four centimeter. So we will try to uh, mobilize the tumor and uh, pull it uh, uh, back uh, and the, uh, take it out uh, from the uh, <coughs> proximal. Uh, but in the case of a large tumor, so um, you place the uh, distal, uh, another incision, and then so push out technique. So would you describe a little bit more about your special technique to push the tumor out for a large region? Yes, uh, thank you, Haru. So uh, uh, sometimes uh, we have uh, encountered, especially in difficulty, especially in large tumor, where we cannot be sure whether the distal part is completely resected or when we pull, we cannot pull from the, uh, uh, the proximal incision and uh, that we can open up an exit site over the anal side. And uh, of course it can be done under a uh, double scope technique as well, like uh, using um, the small nasal scope to observe uh, the distal end. And in the tunnel, I can open up a mucosal incision from the inside to the outside wow. and look at the distal end and ensure we place a good uh, you know, um, exit site. And pushing sometimes is a, uh, more easy than pooling. So that's one of the reasons why I try to open up a distal exit site. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, uh, you mentioned that the, uh, uh, you place the uh, distal incision from inside in a submucosal uh, uh, lumen, uh, and then cut the mucosa from backside, and then uh, so you monitor the second scope. Yes. Uh, from the uh, natural lumen. Yes. So the, uh, Position of the uh, second incision is the uh, overlap to the tumor or behind the tumor? Behind the tumor. Behind, behind the, the tumor. tumor. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. So, so for the distance uh, from the uh, distance. Really the short, tumor. very short distance. Actually, okay. almost a no uh, distance, but uh, ensure that the back uh, muscle layer is intact. That's in, important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And then uh, you push the tumor. Uh, yes, yes. So pulling, pulling the tumor is uh, uh, quite difficult in some situation. Yes. Okay, so. Um, okay. So. Yeah, I have one question. Yes, yes, of course. Yes, of yes. Course. Professor Manabu, 
그리고 마나부. I think that esophageal SMT are almost benign tumor. Uh -huh. Yeah, but symptomatic SMT need the endoscopy resection. Symptomatic esophageal SMT need the endoscopy resection. Yes, I agree. Also, when the no symptomatic esophageal SMT, sometimes I try the truncal biopsy and US guided aspiration or biopsy, so on, for the pathology confirmation. Do you think about this point? So uh, if the patient want to reject uh, the SMTs, uh, we do the point procedure. So uh, if, 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 if the patient doesn't, uh, if the tumor is uh, not malignancy, uh, we don't need to reject it. Okay. So maybe, maybe I think uh, that's a point. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Joyan Cho. It's a very important question. And the other animal, since I mentioned, I uh, also think, um, so more, of course, you know, we, we, if we find uh, some mucosal tumor, uh, we definitely need a fine needle aspiration and then uh, fix uh, the pathological uh, um, uh, diagnosis. And if the uh, gist, uh, we have to resect it, of course. And uh, uh, so maybe uh, your point of view is uh, if it's a benign, so lyomyoma, the without symptom, so for the indication of this procedure. So I, I so myself, I recommend the patient, if the patient has this, any, any symptom or so tumor size is uh, uh, larger than uh, three, two or three centimeter, less than two centimeter, uh, we um, do not uh, try to resect. So if it's a uh, benign. Um, so Dr. Philip Chu, would you uh, comment on this indication? Yeah, thank you. I, uh, I think this is uh, one of the most arguable point nowadays because uh, we are uh, endoscopy, so uh, actually um, Haru and uh, also uh, Jung Young are the pioneer that we can actually take it out. But uh, actually anything, even small is easier, but uh, are we going to take all this tumor out? I think that is uh, questionable, is subject to argument. And I don't think there will be any you know, evidence to demonstrate that uh, we have only evidence to show the technique of the uh, poet or the stir is really safe. And that is something that we know, but uh, whether we should treat those who are less than two centimeter, I think this is uh, very arguable. From the patient perspective, sometimes when I talk to the patient, they actually prefer to take tumor out. Like if it's two centimeter or 1.5, they like to take it out because uh, they are uh, less worried about a tumor inside themselves. Even when we explain these are benign tumor, these are not necessarily worry, but if you subject the patient on surveillance EUS, no matter what uh, uh, time uh, period of waiting, they will still be worried before the EUS that they may have a large tumor or something you know, more malignant uh, feature coming out. So uh, that's one of the argument, but I think this is uh, more <laughs> than a scientific uh, 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 parameter that we can prove whether this is a, uh, effective or beneficial to the patient or not. So thank you very much, Philip. Uh, and the, uh, may I ask you one more question uh, to Dr. Philip? So during your lecture, you mentioned in one case, so uh, you try to dissect the behind the uh, submucosal tumor, and then so you are suspected so tumor, some connection to uh, adjacent structure, uh, aortic wall or something. So at the time you confirm using the ultrasonography. Um, so uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, it, it, uh, uh, it's a very good procedure to uh, get the confidence that we can resect the tumor. So uh, it's a good procedure, uh, but do you have any case 
so uh, lyomyoma, that is uh, actually uh, tightly connected to adjacent structures such as uh, elta or trachea. Uh, luckily, uh, no ca such case. And, uh, uh, but uh, I will not say uh, our procedure is 100% because uh, I have uh, actually one patient uh, not attached to surrounding structure, but I actually cannot uh, manipulate and pull it out at the G junction. It is also a lyomyoma, but I simply cannot take the tumor out per orally because uh, it's uh, quite large after dissection. I like the uh, uh, same tumor, but uh, much bigger. Uh, so I need to convert to laparoscopic uh, uh, tumor resection and uh, just take it out. So um, uh, that is uh, one of the challenge. And sometimes uh, uh, there are several uh, features before operation that we can predict whether you need a laparoscopic assistant. So first is uh, on the CT scan. So you can, you, I need to look at the film by myself and see anatomical arrangement of the tumor. And uh, sometimes uh, the reporting uh, from either EUS or CT scan, the dimension may not be correct because it is not 3D reconstructed. It's only a 2D measurement at all time. So uh, endoscopists need to look at it. If there is any suspicions of uh, uh, spiral arrangement or too big a uh, size, uh, then you may have to prepare for a laparoscopic assistance for a tumor retrieval. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> it's a very important caution uh, to anybody. So uh, yes, of course, there are two more sides, the two centimeter, so no problem. Endoscopically, we really it. But uh, in the case of a uh, tumor size uh, more than four centimeter, so as uh, Philip mentioned, uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, looks easy, but actually uh, mobilization of the tumor is uh, technically uh, very difficult uh, only by endoscopic approach. Yeah. So um, uh, Dr. Joyanto or Dr. Onimaru Sensei, so would you uh, some comment on this? Okay, Professor okay. Philip Ju. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, in the case of exoluminal esophageal SMT, small size, without uh, important uh, organ into mediastinum, exoluminal, do you try to point? <laughs> oh, okay. Very good question. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, sometimes, but not very common, but sometimes um, this kind of um, Lao Maoma can actually have a big uh, extra luminal component. So that means a lot yeah. of component is outside uh, the uh, outside. muscle layer, outside. So yeah. uh, in that case, uh, uh, we have two options. So one is a POET, the other is a minimal invasive surgery. For me, I also do thoracoscopic esophageal surgery. So uh, I have two uh, options. But to me, if I need to go through the thoracic cavity, uh, I would rather go through the endoscopic uh, you know, uh, uh, approach because I don't need to collapse one lung and the mobility is uh, less, unless uh, the tumor is really difficult. So I will be prepare the patient in, and I will do it inside the operating theater and tell the patient we might need to convert to a thoracoscopic procedure, but if we can do uh, endoscopic then you don't need to collapse one lung. The stress to the heart and the lung is much less. So I, I think that is uh, still good that we can attempt to do uh, the uh, POI procedure, providing the tumor is not uh, close to the adjacent major organ like the heart, the descending aorta, or the membranous part of a trachea. Yeah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Joy and Cho. Nice question and uh, yes, uh, good answer. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like one more question uh, to uh, so all of you. So um, so of course the uh, lyomyoma in the esophagus, including the uh, uh, gist. So most of the tumor are located at uh, level of uh, esophagogastric junction. So, so middle part of the esophagus, um, most of um, uh, frequent uh, area is the um, most frequent area is the level of a uh, botaro, botaro ligaments. What, what I mean is 25 centimeter or 27 centimeter from the uh, teeth 
on the left side. So, position of Botaro. What's the reason why so many lion myoma arise in this area? So, maybe uh, I, I checked many literature, but no comments. So, uh, Philip or uh, Joe and Joe and uh, Unimal Sensei, do you, do you know about it? No. I'm sorry, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. So I, I only know that the endoscopic diagnosis of this submucosa, it seems to have uh, increased incidence. So whether this is because we have a clearer endoscopic imaging uh, processing uh, unit, whether our endoscopy is uh, more meticulous or whether there's real increase in this incidence, I actually cannot tell. But I can see that uh, many more submucosal tumor in the upper GI tract is being diagnosed recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And the, uh, so some most frequent position is a, uh, so endoscopic view right behind of the compression by the uh, left uh, bronx, behind, just behind left bronx. That is a most frequent location of the submucosal tumor of, of the middle part of this up So that's the reason why just, just I want to know the reason why so, such a tumor grows. So um, anyway, so um, we have a lot of discussion, but the time is uh, coming. So anybody, um, uh, any additional <laughs> comments or question? Yeah, we can accept one more question. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, again, I really appreciate the uh, Dr. Philip Chu, your nice live demo, and uh, um, yes, uh, your uh, comments as well. And the Onimar Sensei, nice lecture to us. And the uh, Dr. Uh, Joyan Cho, thank you very much for your um, moderatorship, and uh, also <laughs> your comment is uh, 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 very important for us. So everybody, thank you very much. Uh, I hope uh, uh, young doctors uh, enjoy this session. So uh, next time we'd like to see each other, so physically, directly. So, thank, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank bye -bye. you. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>